My name is Steve Dabelow and I'm representing the Cannon Falls Historical Society and tonight uh, we're going to be talking about uh, the Cannon Falls Community Men's Choir or the Mayo Chorus as it was known back in the 50s. I have to my right here Chuck Schofield who was a member of that choir and uh, Willis Morehouse who was a member and um, uh, they were getting to be fewer and fewer as we were talking earlier before the meeting. But I want to share this uh, one statement out of the uh, Chronicles of Cannon Falls uh, and it says that uh, one of the greatest differences between the early and later part of the 20th century is in entertainment. People in the early days created their own fun and music because we didn't have the ability to do that. And so as a, um, a backdrop to this is that on October 20th of 1950 in the Cannon Falls Beacon was a notice inviting all men interested in singing to attend a meeting. And the first meeting came about as a result of a discussion held at Loman's Popcorn Crib, which was a popcorn stand that was almost right next to the Cannon Falls Theater, where I guess some guys were hanging out eating popcorn, waiting for girls to come out of the theater. Was that yeah, how it yeah. worked? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <coughs> That's what I'm told. <laughs> anyway, um, Al Lohman uh, enjoyed music. He owned the popcorn stand, and he was a big force behind this. Uh, Eighteen men turned out for the first meeting, uh, but over the years, the chorus or the uh, um, different versions of it grew to as more as 38 to 42 or 44 voices, which was quite large. And one of the things that they did was donate the proceeds from all their concerts to local charities. And when uh, Zach and I were looking through some of the uh, uh, publications in these uh, uh, collections here, <coughs> there was money raised in the, in the 1950s, early 50s, of $1,000 and $1,500 and $2,000. And in today's dollars, that's approaching $10,000, $15,000. So there was significant money raised. But we want to talk about some of the stories. My father was a very active member in it. And so uh, since Chuck is to my right here, um, I'm going to ask, what are your first memories of the early years in Mayo Chorus? Well, back in those days, we had a, uh, a committee that uh, had to take care of the build the scenery. <clears throat> and we'd go to Kenyon, Wanamingo, Goodyear, and we'd have, have to have a scenery committee. We'd have to go down ahead of time and set this all up on stage before the, re the rest of the course there. So we'd leave at, oh, sometimes noon for an eight o'clock uh, concert. And it was Dale Lawrence and I, and Merle Olson was the chairman. And uh, I think it was Don Grote, and uh, I said Dale Lawrence. And anyway, the rest of the crew went down there to set this uh, whole deal up, and it was up to the chairman of the scenery committee to bring a bottle of whiskey along. So if we went out to have a supper between setting up the stage and having to and get something to eat and then go sing, <coughs> We'd have to have enough there, to, you know, to have a little canooper before we got going. So uh, Merle said, "I got to go visit a, a cousin or some some relative of his." Be Merle Olson. Merle Olson, yes, and he was the one that had to su that supplied the bottle, and uh, we drank it down to about three four inches above, and then we filled it full of coffee. You know, so Merle came back, and he thought the bottle was full. It was Al McAvoy was the other one that, uh, so uh, <clears throat> Al, we got, Merle threw it in his 
glove compartment of his car. Didn't want to get caught, caught with a bottle or something. <clears throat> anyway, we got to, I think it was Kenyon. And uh, McAvoy says, Merle, what'd you do with that bottle? So, well, it's right there in the glove compartment, so give it to me. And Al took it, grabbed it, and he took it, swigging <laughs> down, you know. And he kept going on that bottle all the time. And, and uh, Mel Johnson, or Merle came up to Mel Johnson, who was the director, and said, Keep an eye on McAvoy. He's been drinking. Your <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it was coffee now. It was coffee, yeah, it was coffee. <laughs> Uh, and uh, we had uh, Merle all, he was all ticked off and uh, trying to get Melvin to keep an eye on, on, the, on, uh, on uh, El McAvoy. That was one thing, and there's so many things, it's hard to remember them all. Uh, there was a lot of mischief, and I remember as a kid, uh, as my dad painted some of those backdrops, yeah. very extensive mm -hmm. sets that I got into the paint one time uh, and got in trouble, you yeah. know, but imagine that. Uh, Willie, have you got a memory that stands out? I guess you wouldn't say it's in the same vein that Chuck's talking. I guess the thing that really stands out to me about the male chorus, we were a group of people from the Randolph area that got asked to be part of this. And we were young guys. Uh, it was our night out. Mm -hmm. That's really what it came down to. And I always remember the camaraderie of the whole group and also of the people from there. Uh, there was probably very few of us in the male chorus that could read music. And Mel taught us, but we enjoyed doing it while we were doing it. And uh, I think uh, I was telling my wife, I can still hear Mel. Well, here we come now. <laughs> yeah. I, I recognize that <laughs> accent, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but it was just a camaraderie because we didn't, sit around the TV in those days. There wasn't such a thing. And it was a, well, I guess you'd call it a good community camaraderie and the community supported the chorus like you mentioned. Uh, monies that were raised. I had a lot of thoughts when they built the new hospital because we had a room up in the old hospital that said Cannon Falls Mail Chorus on it. Mm, I, I don't know, know the amount of money that was raised, but they did raise money for that room. Uh, so it was a community effort and we enjoyed doing it totally. I mean, I, I guess we were all a little disappointed when TV and these other things took over. Uh, but the camaraderie to me was really great. You know, I... Wonderful. Something you cherish for... You know. Good good bunch of guys. Oh, yeah. And like you say, yeah, a lot of fun. And I often think about it. How did I get the cows milked? and get the chores done, and get to Wanamingo or Byron. Yeah. You know, it had to take uh, a lot of effort. <laughs> yeah. Can you remember some of the towns? Because a lot of people think the male chorus only sang in Cannon Falls. And it was a lot of work, I understand. I've been visiting with people, um, putting those sets up in other towns, hauling them over there. Mm -hmm. can, can you remember? I've got a list of them, but I'm not going to read them. I want to see how guys, how, what, what went, you remember. Went to Goodhue, Kenyon, Wanamingo. We went to Minneapolis to sing for the, I think it was a teacher's organization or something. <coughs> uh, Byron. Byron, yeah. And there was one Wisconsin one in here. He went to Woodville. I don't know what year. I don't know what year that was. 
might have been when I was in college or something, because uh, Al Johnson sang in the chorus and he was from that area. Oh, that's right, they were. They yeah. were from that area. But as I recall, when you went to all of these communities, extremely well accepted. Yeah. I mean, you had crowds. There, was, there, there wasn't as much to do, and I'm hearing about crowds of uh, 900 to 1,000 people oh. at some of these events. Well, it was two nights. Yeah, two nights, yeah. Here. <clears throat> so um, explain a little bit about competition choral singing, because I was going to look this up. Uh, you guys were somewhat hooked to where the Commodores are, the S-P-O-S-S-P-O-S-S. -S -S. Uh, but it was... Spesqua. What is it called? Spevska Swa. <laughs> yeah, okay. Whatever. It's just a bunch of like 16 letters it's and all, stuff. It's all barbershop. Yeah. But the, but the choruses sing more of a barbershop mm -hmm. type harmony. Am I correct with that or not? No, not necessarily. We sing okay. a little bit of everything. Yeah. And we did it all. Of course, we started in September and had uh, the uh, program in April or in the spring mm -hmm. so that we could do everything by memory, every song. That's right. And uh, no, no sheet music or anything to read off of. And uh, we did uh, any, we'd have, uh, one time we had like a fishing scene or deal and we had it uh, for the, for the, uh, <laughs> they made a boat. I was going to ask you, they, because they, I, I can't see a picture of that, but explain to everybody how that boat left the dock. Well, it was on one side of the stage, and we had attached a rope to it, and as we were singing, and the guy stood in the back there. And but the boat didn't move. Yeah, oh, yeah. It was the posts on the dock that pulled away. No, the, I think the, Did the, the boat whole move? boat moved across the, the uh, <laughs> stage, front of the stage. I remember that night watching when that movement started happening on the stage. It was just like, ah. <laughs> oh. Yeah. <laughs> Another but time. There was some very talented people that worked on these sets. Yeah. I mean, they were talented, like, you know, your dad now. Yeah. You know, really. Yeah, I know that he had a gift for that. I mean, and I, I can picture those sets today, yet they were just, uh, <laughs> I've wondered what became of them. They used to be stored down in the basement of. Jim Groves right. down in the Mason's Bowl. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> I think they've been tossed out. Remember one year we were singing dry, them dry bones, they got to get up, walk around, and oh. they got a, a skeleton, you know, <laughs> the, and they hung it up in the front, and they used black light on it, so they turned down the lights on the, on the floor, and as we were singing, there the skeleton would go, and they started doing the <laughs> Bump and grind is all it did. I'd forgotten that, but I do remember it, yes. <laughs> oh, that was what year, what year could that have been? Oh, Late I, 50s, I, early 60s? I don't remember what year it was. So many of them, you know, that when you say It was before my day, so uh, it would have been the early 60s. Is, when when did you get involved, Willie? When did you get involved? I want to think it was in the mid-60s. Uh, okay. I, but I really couldn't. Uh, and Chuck, right out of high school? Yeah, I started out, I was a senior in high school in 51. 51, yeah. okay. Oh, okay. And uh, of course then I went off to college. And when I got through with that, I came back. And I sang again for, I suppose, 15, 20 years. But uh, we had a lot of fun, a lot of fun singing. You mentioned on the way over here that you did a concert in the band shell. Yes, oh. that was the first the oh, one that yeah. I can remember. Would I love to have been there for that, just That's to see that. And the we band sang, shell. Uh, when you speak of this, so, uh, the yeah. most impressive thing I ever heard the male chorus sing, and I wasn't in it, but Memorial Day service, they stood on the hill out there where the cannon mm. is, they sang the Battle Hymn of the Republic. Oh, wow. And that was the most impressive thing I think I've ever the, the heard. Whole, the whole choir? Yep. Wow. Yeah. Uh, There's a picture in one of the scrapbooks of a reduced choir singing at a Memorial Day out in Vesa. 
but I didn't know that they sang Battle Hymn and Republic That's here. We used to sing it basically for their uh, Demai or whatever they have down there. Is that a German thing, Chuck? <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> you kidding? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. You have to edit that part. I couldn't resist, Mike. I'm sorry, but uh, wow, wow. Well, I, I can remember the first concert we sang in the band show. I can remember one of the songs was, uh, oh, the Sweet Kentucky Babe, Skeeter's in my humming and the oh. Honeysuckle Vine, Sweet yeah. Kentucky Babe. That was the yeah. song we sang. And then we did about two or three more up and down there at the same time <clears throat> at the band shell. That's a long time ago. It's quite a memory. Yeah. I don't know why that sticks in my mind. Willie, can't, you got can't a remember anything else. You got a song that you can remember that you enjoyed singing? I know when I'm in the community choir, uh, there's a couple that I do enjoy doing. I think Chuck will agree with me. You know, the opening number and the closing yeah, number. Yeah, right. Oh. I mean, this just, and of course, I'm sure that was Mel Johnson's yep. <clears throat> big deal, you know. Uh, so mm -hmm. here, you weren't in 1954, but Chuck was, and the, the opening song, well, you might have been a Viva co company, college. Right? Uh, the, the Halls of Ivy was the opening song. Really? Okay. And the closing song was, May the Good Lord Bless yeah, and Keep that You. That was we ended always that the closing. Every Every, every time, I every think, concert yes. yep. was a closing hymn. May the good Lord bless and keep yep. you was your closing, that was your, your handle. Yep. But I wonder when Viva La Company started. I don't know. Todd Bramer used to sing it. Oh, yeah. Very. Uh, yep. Good fellowship. <laughs> <laughs> Viva La Company. I was going to say when you were talking about barber shopping, yeah. Mel always included a very wide selection. Yeah, right. Everything, well, religious, how do I put it? Always yeah. a couple of religious <coughs> numbers, yeah. uh, you know, very, and a couple barbershop, but it wasn't primarily barbershop. No, it, uh, you have a barbershop or so, and then a religious religion. So here's a. Uh, 1963, so we get Willie involved here, and in the opening set it was Brothers Sing, sing On. on yeah. Look at you oh, knew that. Yeah. Is it? Brothers Sing On. Yeah. You, could you sing the first line? Yeah. No, I can't. I don't remember how it went. Uh, I can't. Uh, next one was Surrey with the Fringe on Top. Oh, yeah. And one of my fun songs that I enjoy, Cool Water. Cool Water, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all day I face the barren waste. All day I face the barren waste without a taste of water. Cool water, water. Oh, then and I with ropes burnt dry and souls that cry for water, water, cool water. And here, and here it is, um, the, the closing song, May the Good Lord Bless and Keep yep. You. Um, prior to that, uh, with Toddy Bramer as a soloist, is The Lord is My Shepherd. Mm -hmm. And and a few of these I saw, The Lord's Prayer. Um, I think that's what made it real interesting also was the variety, yeah, don't right. you think? Did some show tunes, so forth. <coughs> you know, let me see if I can pick up here. I think there's more programs in here. And by the way, um, uh, these scrapbooks with this information in it, um, it came from the Cannon Falls Museum, and uh, people are welcome uh, to come down to the museum mm -hmm. and uh, uh, go through this. Um, so let's see. There, quite often, and Zach and I have so much fun with this. Zach is the museum director, and. Um, here, this concert is April 12th and 13th, but it doesn't say the year. Doesn't say the year? No, oh. no, none of them hardly ever say the year. <laughs> but 
<laughs> because everybody knew what year it was, right? Yeah. It's, of course, it's at 8.15 on April 12th and the 13th. 8.15. At the school 15. auditorium, but it doesn't say the year. Neither does the ticket, you know. Uh, Chuck Sheridan had the uh, solo in Old Man River. <laughs> in Old Man River, that Old Man River, it just keeps rolling. <laughs> And he kept rolling, he, let, he forgot the word. Oh, so he so just he kept, kept rolling. rolling the, <laughs> yeah. He kept well. rolling all the way through it. <laughs> it. So that was the whole song he was yeah. rolling. The old, well. old Man River kept on rolling. Uh, <laughs> this one here was 1954. They raised $1,400. Um, but I'm not, uh, uh, the uh, Goodyear County Infantile Paralysis Chapter. Mm. So that must have had to do with polio. Polio, probably. Um, at the time and stuff like that so um, I'm sure Mike will be able to post some of these pictures um, one of them that I enjoy so much is you would invite uh, other people to sing and this is a uh, woman's quartet yeah yep. right and you were able to say all four names yep. yeah you want to try it again on camera Marie, Marie Miller Myrna Olson Bev Anderson or Bev Duncan and uh, Carol Miller. Yep. And one of these ladies was fairly famous as things go from Cannon Falls. Yep. She was Miss Minnesota. Yep. Miss Marie. Marie, Marie. Miss Marie Minnesota. was Miss Minnesota. What year roughly? Any idea? Um, but it would have been in the 50s? Yeah, 50s, 54, uh, 53, 54. She sang at my wedding. That's kind of how I remember. Oh, really? I enjoy this um, set because it looks like it's a nightclub. Yeah. And so the choir got dressed in white tuxedos and mm -hmm. bow ties uh, for that. Well, we had two outfits. Okay, I didn't know you that. Know, a white mm -hmm. dinner jacket yeah. and a black tuxedo. That black was heavy. Heavy, yeah, heavy wool, wool, heavy wool coats. Be up there in the sweat would be just running down your forehead. So what's interesting here is in 56 it was called a festival of songs, song. And in 57, it was the Festival of Song. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, let's see here. It looks like Ora Lee. Is that a song? Yep. Ora Lee, yep. yeah. Ora Lee. Yep. St Stars of the Summer Night. Mm -hmm. Oh, and one of my favorites, Summertime. Summertime, yeah. Autumn Leaves. Uh, Winter Wonderland, Sleigh Song, and Toe Tapping with the Rhythm Bombs Combo. <laughs> Holy, holy, holy. I yeah. saw somewhere else where Don Groat sang a solo during that song. Mm. And Apparently there was songs repeated. Okay. You know. Ten years later or something. Oh, Master, Let Me Walk With Thee. Mm -hmm. God of Our Fathers. Soloist Bob O'Gorman. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And may the good Lord bless and keep you. Um hard to pick it out it's tough but what would you say was your favorite song that was sung by the choir or the chorus I guess we call it boy that's difficult it is difficult yes because like I mentioned the closing and the opening I think got to be favorites <coughs> with all of us mm-hmm you uh, choke up while you sang it, the closing? Well, I choke up when I hear the song. Uh, mm. I don't recall it exactly that way, but uh, I think when the male chorus was, what do I want to use the word, revived in mm. recent years, yeah. they did use them two songs. Yeah, they used them again. Uh, Even the company and <coughs> And I remember uh, they invited people in the audience that are former members to come up and sing the closing number with us. Oh, that would have been special. You know, yeah, cause very. Cause people sometimes had to drop out for personal or business reasons, but they still had their heart. Yep. But that, you could get up there and sing right with them. <laughs> yeah. Well, you learn these things. Yes. And I admire the patience of Mel for teaching because, uh, and I don't know, he was an amazing man. You know, he didn't hear in the one ear, 
I Wasn't forgot that it? Yeah, he was deaf in one ear. But the other ear, <coughs> he can pick out someone yeah. that was yeah. off. It almost sounds like a joke having a choir director who's yeah. deaf yeah. in one ear. Yeah, you know? one ear. <laughs> but, but he could. He yeah. could pick them out. And he'd make up lyrics for some of the songs we sang, you know. <coughs> he, was very, he was talented in that way. He did a lot of that, like the Ludafest song for the Melodons Quartet. Yes. <coughs> he the wrote, he wrote, stuff. Yeah, he wrote the, the yeah. words for that. Yeah. And, uh, well, he enjoyed that more than anybody. Yeah. <laughs> they had a pretty good quartet. At the time when they were in their prime, yes. They went to the Nationals, the National Convention. I think they took third. Yeah, I, I, I found that in my in my yeah. pre-reading. But if you guys had to memorize the music, and it didn't dawn on me until I realized that in all the images and stuff, you guys never held your music, so you had no. to know your I song. Know oh, it, yeah. yeah. <coughs> I had to memorize it. I still got Pretty that. Pretty tough for a Norwegian, but we got <laughs> it done. <laughs> I still got that little green book somewhere. Yeah. Yep. A little green book, huh? All wore out. <laughs> the war, the war, songs and stuff, you know, dancing tonight, the old campground, and used to sing a lot of World War One songs, World War Two songs. And who picked the songs typically? Um, I don't know. Was it Mel? Mel probably did. Mel, um, or Todd. I I don't know. The lib he was a librarian. You talked about a favorite song. I sit here thinking of, and Toddy Bramer was a soloist in it, but Little Jimmy Brown. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that was quite a song. Yeah. I don't remember that one. I'll have to go. Look Deep in the Valley. How was it? Uh, yeah. Sang a lot of different songs. <laughs> But it talks in there about the, Jimmy Brown had passed away, and yeah. it talks about this church in the valley. Isn't that how it was? The yeah, church? I think so. And something about Jimmy Brown. But Toddy had the solo in that. Yeah. <clears throat> so name some of the stronger voices over the years that you remember. Well, they're all pretty strong, actually. They had to be. Uh, even Bob Brinstead. I remember one time we had a cowboy theme, we had a wagon up there and everything else, and hay bales swung around, and Bob Brinstead was standing on the hay bale in the back, and he, pretty soon you could see his arms going <laughs> down on the floor. He went. <laughs> we got him back up on there again. <laughs> he could have hurt himself. Oh, terrible. Lucky he didn't. Rufus Miller had a good voice. Rufus? Ralph Miller. Ralph Miller. Of course, Al Lohman, Bob Gorman, Don Grote. Wally Jacobson. Wally had, had a good tenor voice. Uh, Merle Olson had a pretty good one. Irv, Irv Robinson had a good, he was a good bass, and Dale Florenson was a good bass. Kermit Lindahl was a good baritone. Oh, Todd Bramer was a good, had a good voice. Arnie had a good voice, you know, all those guys. So, so since uh, many of these men have passed on, um, were there some clinkers in the crowd? No, not really. I know I'm a clinker in our choir, okay? Uh, I'll just cough that up right away. <laughs> no, that, everybody. Well, I think anything along that line, Mel had a great way of dealing yeah. with people without making you feel like a jerk or a fool. I mean, he had a nice way about him. Yeah. To Another time we were getting ready for the concert, <clears throat> we were going to take a picture for the Beacon. And we all lined up out on the gym floor, and it just waxed it. <laughs> this is Bob Rinston again. <laughs> he took two steps and down he went. Got him back up again. He took another two steps and down he went. 
again. But <laughs> <laughs> and of course, everybody's laughing, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> oh, a lot of funny things that went on in that chorus, I'll tell you, if you could repeat them. <laughs> yeah, I know one that we can't, but uh, <laughs> poor Carl. <laughs> but, oh, yeah. So um, you didn't have any fun after the concerts? Oh, yeah, there was always an afterglow. <laughs> Look at Willie. <laughs> Go down to the Vets Club, you know, and sing and have a few and sing and sing some more until you couldn't sing anymore, you know. Your voice was shot. But uh, used to have fun. Good fun bunch. Those were the days. But even after practices. Yeah. Like I said, it was our night out. Yeah. You always go out and think of Windy Acres or something to have yeah. coffee or something like that. Everybody you know. went to Windy Acres and of course in them days that was a a family restaurant. Mm hmm I mean uh, Mrs. Penfield them, they all treat you like she was your mother. Yeah. No, I mean they were very they cater to us. I think our favorite there, we always had a chocolate sundae with a bag of planter's peanuts. <laughs> 25 cents. Yeah. <laughs> of course, in them days, I would dare say 90% of the guys smoked, didn't they? Oh, yeah, everybody smoked. You know, it was a... Then you get older, you learn that that wasn't yeah. so good. <laughs> I had, had a couple of instances where you'd be singing the, the concert, you know, hot up there, and Kenny Adi was one to somebody get Kenny, <laughs> have to grab him, take him down off the risers, hang him upside down, on his blood, get the blood back up into his head, and then he'd come back up, sing some more. You would hang him upside down. Yeah, <laughs> get him some fresh air. Well, when you were on the risers in a concert, there's a certain stress. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that's the right you word. Couldn't, you couldn't move, and you're jammed right. in there, you know. Yeah. You were, and after a while, enough was enough. In the yeah. body heat, and singing is a little bit aerobic, you know, it takes energy. Yeah, right. Well, and if you had on like that uh, heavy... Black, black tux. Oh. Heavy wool tux with a cover bund on it, you know. And, uh, and no air conditioning. No air conditioning. I still got them. The cover buns? No, the, yeah, and the tux. Oh, the suit? Tux. tux? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. I turned mine in, I think, years ago. Well, they didn't. <laughs> We were a pretty good looking group up there. I got all their bow ties on them, the black ducks or the white deal, cover buns. <clears throat> but I think when we sang a barbershop number, we had a vest. Yeah, vest on. With a string tie. String tie and a, what are those hats you call them? I tried to put that vest on a few years ago. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> no, no, I'm sure it did. <laughs> uh, tork, tork pie hat, is that the way they are? Yep. <clears throat> from one of our songs or two. Very in innovative to try to match up outfits with the songs that you sang. <laughs> I think the best part of the male chorus, the fact that I don't recall any one person <clears throat> ever placing himself above no. anyone else. No. There was no arrogant, important, yeah. no matter how good a singer they were, it was, everybody was. And that can happen sometimes. You know. Yeah. Well. But they weren't that way in any way, shape, or form that I recall. Nope, never. Got along good. Now, them original people I mentioned that, you know, we came out of the Randolph area. See, there was some of them older ones, Nathan Luffy and Irv yep. Adi and them that sang before me. Ken Adi. And, uh, yeah. But I always said, even if we lived in Randolph, uh, we're still part of Cannon Falls. 
I mean, our business was done here. Yeah. There's always been a little competition there, but we uh, thought the girls here were nicer than the ones at <laughs> Randall. So you used to hang around Al Oldman's <laughs> popcorn crib too. Yeah. <laughs> but that could work the other way. I now this has nothing to do with the male chorus, but I go to a dermatologist in Burnsville, and one of the girls working there. I think she comes from the Spring Garden area originally. Mm. Uh, starts with an S. Mm. Stockard or something like that. I can't. But she had to tell me, oh, you're from Gannon, from Randolph. Oh, we always thought the boys there were a lot cuter than the ones in Cannon Falls. <laughs> <laughs> I said, your right side wasn't real good either. <laughs> but we were all. Healthy competition. No, that's where we spend our time. Yeah. One other time we went down and to Lake City and we sang at the, I uh, can't remember the name of the, it was a fancy ballroom and everything and oh. we sang there. Yeah, we seeing, out, just outside of Lake City. Yeah, seeing, um, seeing, uh, I Joel, can picture the place. Joe O'Gorman, anyway. There was a bar there and uh, they, we, we ate everything else and uh, who was it? It was uh, Ed, uh, oh. anyway Joe Gorman lived in town and he got up the next morning and said I looked at my billfold and I thought I'd been robbed. And he said, no. <laughs> <laughs> Sign of a good night. Huh? Yes. <laughs> when you mentioned Joe Gorman this was another huh. great thing I think with the mail course at Christmas time. They went caroling. Yeah. Coleman with the buses, he furnished the bus. And we went different places and yeah. Joe Gorman was one place. And I think he probably appreciated that more than yeah, right. you'll ever know. I mean, things like that. And we had a fun job doing it. Yeah. And we go back to the school yep. and have Clam chowder or something, you know? Clam chowder and chili. And Mel Johnson had a very touchy stomach. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that clam chowder and he was out the door. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> you had a bus would take you around uh, different communities or just Cannon Falls? Just Cannon, right? yeah. Just Cannon, basically Randolph. Cannon, yeah. but okay. you know, like... Uh, Sang at the sanatorium. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, well, I don't know how many churches we sang in. Of course, we've did that lately. And the camaraderie was probably the, really the highlight of the whole thing. Yep. You know. bunch of guys. Plus you had fun doing it. Yeah. With, uh, well you wouldn't have done it if you didn't. So um, what I discovered here is that the uh, Historical Society has the uh, 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 notes of all the meetings uh, since the origin of the mm -hmm. male chorus. Right. And I did not know that. I just <coughs> got my hands on this early this morning and um, uh, the original meeting was fourth quarter of 51 when they first had the call for singers, but the actual organization of the male chorus was formed in uh, January of 52. And so the Cannon Falls male chorus, oh, I can't read this, uh, rehearsal meeting and uh, practice on January uh, 12, 52. At this meeting, Bombo Gorman was elected president. Al Loman treasurer, and my father Arnie Dablo is secretary. Uh, Don Groat, um, is it Arlie Johnson? Arlie Johnson, Arlie yeah. Johnson. Um, Merle Olson and Lori Lawrence Bramer as a librarian. Thirty-eight people attended that first turnout, mm. and um, it goes on and on. And uh, what's sort of special for me is it's in my my father's handwriting for many years. Mm. Um, but um, 
Uh, here is um, a program from 1961. So, Willie, you probably would have been in by then? I don't know. You don't know. But uh, so the tenors were um, Toddy Bramer, James Duff, Donald Flown, Donovan, Donovan Fredrickson, Carl Hoffman, Wallace Johnson, Marvin Kylo. Is he good, Hugh? Yeah. Uh, <coughs> no, he's Denison. Uh. Denison. Okay. Selmer hey. Loven. There you are. Willis Morehouse. Yeah. Okay, Selmer, yeah. Bob, Bob O'Gorman, Ken Adi, uh, Fran, Fran Penfield, Al Remy, oh, yeah. Orvin Romo, yep, yep, yep. <coughs> Don Shramsky and Stan Callister. Oh, what a memory okay, there. Okay, sure. Yeah. Um, and then bases, uh, Scriver, Carlson. Carlson. Yep. Carlson. Arnie Davilo, Bob Engler, Don Grote, C. A. Hellickson. Arlie Johnson, Dale Lawrenson, Ingray Loven, Roger Oddy, Merle Olson, Irwin Oddy, Gerald Oddy, Leroy Oddy. Is that all Randolph? Yep. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. We got the Randolph Oddies, folks. Yeah. Uh, Marvin Rapp. Oh, could he tell stories? Right? Yeah. Oh. yeah good. Um, Russ Robinson. Oh, yeah. George Rusted. Yep. There's Charles Schofield. Yeah. <laughs> William Johnson and John Devine or Devine? Johnny Devine. Johnny Devine. He ran the uh, bus depot. So it says Lawrence Bramer rehearsal accompanist. Did he play the piano? No, couldn't be. I don't recall that. Maybe. Well, I'm sure he could find he'd notes. He'd on it. give the yeah. pitch pitches, I suppose. So yeah. what's interesting here is um, <clears throat> there were dual directors. And one was Mel Johnson, and the other was Roger Risty, who eventually okay. took over for Mel. Yep. So 61 must have started to be the transition year. It was probably Mel's last year. So here are your songs. Are you ready for the songs? Yeah. So the first set is the Songs of Broadway, 76 trombones. Mm -hmm. Around the World in 80 Days was real mm -hmm. big in the early 60s. There was nothing like a dame, oh, and that was from South Pacific. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, Stout-hearted men, okay. and you'll never walk alone with Don Grote as a soloist. Um, a group called the Nocturnal Five then sang for a while. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, it was musical group. Glenn Pagel on tuba, David Lundell cornet. Lance Smith on tenor sax, Gary Olson on drums, and a Janice Hopin or Hoppin on, Hoppin, pi Hoppin Hoppin on piano. And then it was the Songs of War. You mentioned that that yep. was common. <clears throat> so it was caissons, a little red drum, uh, medley, a long way to Tipperary oh, over yeah. there, medley. Tenting Tonight. Tenting yep. Tonight, yeah. yeah. I'd never heard that <coughs> one. I really? Done. But I, I probably did because I guess I was there. My dad sang a solo, so I yeah. probably drugged there, you know, whether <laughs> I wanted to or not. <laughs> How does that one go, tenting? Tenting tonight in the old campground. Uh, yeah, I don't recall I can't remember the, the words. exact words. Uh, I can't remember. But we're tenting tonight. Then you battle him the Republic with Toddy Bramer in a solo. Then the Melodons um, did a set, oh. and you closed with Songs of God and Country. Mm -hmm. And there were um, five songs, This Is My Country, Climbing Up the Mountain, oh, soloist Chuck Schofield, do you remember the song I'm going to sell you? No. Golden Slippers. Oh, Golden, oh. golden Slippers. <coughs> Can you remember that one? No. No. <laughs> no. Uh, no. <laughs> okay. God's Son Has Made Me Free, and May the Good Lord Bless and Keep You. Yep. <coughs> Sounds good, don't it? Yeah. It's quite a program. But so I do know that I would like to know more about Al Lohman because I believe that Al Lohman really had a lot to do with the start of the male chorus and eventually the 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 quartet that became the Melodons that had <coughs> national success. Yeah. Tell me about Al Lohman. Well, he was overweight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. His nickname was Fats Loman. Fats okay. Loman. <laughs> anyway, he had this popcorn, made really good uh, caramel corn. And uh, you could always tell it was Al because you could hear him singing as you came down the street, you know. He'd be out 
singing up in the... As he walked around? No, when he was in selling popcorn. Oh, when you walked down the street, you yeah. could hear him singing in the popcorn machine. In the popcorn machine, machine yeah. Tell and uh, he was really a nice guy. He's from Zimbrota, I believe. And Charlotte, his, his wife, was uh, really yeah. a nice gal, too. <clears throat> she did a lot for the chorus, also. Yeah, and then he, I think and then he got the quartet going, didn't he? Yeah, in that, um, there's another book here that we have. Um, Mel Johnson wrote this. Um, yeah, I've got that at home. And it really sort of is the history of the Melodons, but it does go back to the very origins, and, yeah. and it talks about um, young men hanging around the popcorn stand waiting for the movie to get over. Yeah. Why are you smiling like that, Willie? You got memories? I don't, I don't you recall remember that. that. I mean, it must have been a little prior to my... And um, and and sort of shapes the the whole thing. Sort of started at the popcorn stand, and and Al's love of music and infecting a lot of other people, and that's when the one thing led to another. But I don't know much about Al. I do see that he moved out of town. But yeah. that was the recreation. Yeah. Al moved to Hoyt Lakes. He was the city manager up there. For quite a while, the Melodons and all <coughs> always get together with the Hut Four. Yep. They have summer and winter Olympics, and, and mm -hmm. uh, in the summertime, they took me as the fifth man. Olympics meaning? Oh, we they, we threw horseshoes. Oh, okay. We golfed. We played basketball. Uh, whatever, anything that sport kind of in. Uh, that you'd do in the summertime. In the so, winter, winter time, you'd skate and uh, you'd play basketball. Uh, <laughs> one time in the summertime, Jack Manley had a, he was lived right below where you were, yeah. and he had horses. And we, we'd do a, uh, they'd tie a, a shovel to the back of the horse, and they'd sit on the shovel, and then you'd, you'd, the horse would, Drag around. I think Don McRae broke his tailbone oh. at one time. Early fun in Cannon Falls. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Don Grote, we bowled one year. Don Grote hadn't box, bowled in years, and I think he, three lines, I think he bowled like a 450 or 500, you know. <clears throat> Lucky. Good times. For but you got to remember, that was the entertainment. Oh, yeah, right. Yep. You didn't have these other things. And no. For the um, viewers, the Hut Four is a barbershop quartet from Hudson, Wisconsin. And um, one of the main forces in the Hut Four <coughs> is a gentleman by the name of Bob Dykstra. Yep. I'm sure you remember Bob, a wonderful Dyke, man. Dyke, yeah. And in fact, I had lunch with him about a year ago up in the cities. And um, he enjoys Cannon Falls as he does yeah, right. Hudson, he enjoyed uh, the voices down oh, here. Oh my goodness, how old would he be? He could be at 80 somewhere. Oh, yeah. I'll have to ask him. Because he's still very young. I mean, he's he's old, but he's still very energetic and stuff. He was a university professor. Was he? I did not know that. Him. So the, the Hut Four um, was the nemesis of the Melodons. Is yeah. that the way to say that? Yeah. Uh, the the barbershop quartets were uh, uh, competition performance uh, quartets, and they would uh, go up against other quartets in judging competitions. Mm -hmm. And there would be um, you know, a state and a and a regional and a national. Yep. And uh, the Melodons did make it to nationals. You mentioned earlier they yeah, finished third nationally one, as a one quartet. Time they they went to the nationals. Three, four times. Yep, four men from this area. Um, but um, they were most often foiled by the Hut Four. Hut Four, yeah. Yeah, they couldn't get past the Hut <laughs> Four. They, they were national champions. The Hut the Four hut were four. national champions. <coughs> yep. It used to be interesting to hear them talk about how they traveled. Mm -hmm. You know, Emmanuel out of Stanton would fly them. Oh, yes. Fly them too. And if the weather wasn't real good, I, they used to say, Manuel would say to him, if we think we can make it, we aren't going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. 
a good pilot knows yeah. that. Well, Malcolm landed a brand new twin twin uh, engine plane. Forgot to put the wheels down. Oh no! <laughs> landed it on the grass. Was that the American linen? Yeah, American linen flight. Put it down right on the grass. And again, a little backfill um, that was out at Stanton, yep. and it was a much more active airport back in the 50s and the 60s. And Malcolm did commercial flying as a pilot for different corporations, but he also um, hired out to fly people places. Yep. Couldn't get the male chorus in the airplane, no. but they could get the melodons. One gentleman that probably would have enjoyed all of this just passed away recently. Uh, uh, Glenn? Glenn Aronson. Glenn Aronson, yeah. Because yeah. he would talk about it. You know, he sang in a number of quartets. And he sang with the Minneapolis. Different groups, Minneapolis, Minneapolis Chorus. You sing, sing with the corridor, uh, Commodores, I know they yeah. talk yeah. about that. And so Glenn uh, operated um, uh, Grandpa's Garage here, yep. the event center. But he loved his music. And he was a good singer. Very yep. good singer, yes. Yeah, that was. Uh, however, now there was good singers in the male chorus. I think. However, like I say, a big percentage couldn't even read music, which was, to me, very amazing. Well, there wasn't as much schooling in the 40s, and this all started in the 50s, so. Yeah. And you in the 60s. But Mel had the patience to work with him. That was yeah. just amazing, I thought. Well, you'd have two or three guys in each section, you know, each. Yeah, it would be strong. section in the bass would. Uh, yeah. <coughs> the red music, I used to read music, no problem. Mm -hmm. Still do, but. Uh, would you break apart and do, you know, different uh, yeah. you know, tenors and stuff? And yeah. so you go off and work together? And yeah. Same old. Yeah. Had Lyndon E. Hansen as a music director, and I tell you, he made you toe the mark, and uh, that's where I learned how to read music. Mm. Of course, my mother was a good musician, too, so. Hmm. So I've had fun all my life singing in the male chorus, church choirs, church choir, and had a lot of fun. I sung, sung in the church choir for what was it, I think it was 67 years. And leading the rotary every every yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, <laughs> we yeah. don't sing anymore now that you're out in rotary. <laughs> <laughs> Just the Pledge of Allegiance, John. <laughs> I want you to know that. <laughs> they gave it up. They gave it up. But I was going to say, in all of this, with the male chorus too, you got to appreciate good music. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, otherwise you wouldn't do this. And I... I know this is getting personal, but you go back to my family. My wife played the organ in church for 46 years before she passed away. Which church my was that son, be? My son, Baptist church? church in Randall. Baptist church in Randall. Okay, I did not know and that. And then my son, Gary, he sang in a gospel quartet for several years. They traveled five states. Hmm. And I know this sounds prejudiced. They were good. I've but heard them. I've dear heard them. old dad was home milking the cows, so he finally mm -hmm. had to quit this. Good go. <laughs> was, you know, I was going to bring that up that I, I thought there was, um, you know, some Morehouse family a cappella group at one time, at, you know, because because barbershop is done. Oh, they could all. And, and now, you know, just like the Callister uh, sons um, uh, saying some a cappella four part male. Last yeah. Saturday, my granddaughter got married. My son and three of her uncles sang the Lord's Prayer. Mm. It makes you cry. I understand. It yeah. really would. Mm. And needless to say, that makes me proud. You know, of kids. My right. youngest son very accomplished pianist. Hmm. He can put on his own program, singing and, you know, and they get all this from their mother, not me. <laughs> <laughs> but they're good farmers too. Yeah. Well, hopefully, yeah. But I mean, it makes you proud of them and you gotta appreciate good music. It helps. 
Oh, mm. yeah. yeah. I know the choir had good volume and they could fill that gymnasium with sound. Yeah. Well, that was one too. thing. You were out at the front of the stage, not the back of the stage. Yeah. That was a must. Good director. I don't know how I'd say it. He had a way of discipline also. I mean, for yeah. people to pay attention. I don't know how you described it, but... Well, people he, respected him, you know, so... Oh, definitely. But he had your attention. How many hours a night would you rehearse when you got together? Well, we go two or three hours a night. A couple hours mm -hmm. at the most, probably. Yeah. And then how many weeks of practice before a performance, typically? Oh, I, well, like Chuck said, you went from the fall till April. Yeah. See, now this way ahead of me. They, that was the four errors, the predecessors of the Melodons, but they were dressed up like that because of overhaul days. Overhaul days. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so you want to tell the camera what overhaul days was about? <laughs> yeah. Because you guys were stand on both sides of that. Oh, my Chuck goodness. was a Main Street businessman, and you were a farmer. Yeah. yeah. Yep. So Invited all, all the farmers the in to play whist, and everybody got a corncob pipe and tobacco and wore overalls. The, the businessmen dressed like overhauls yeah. in appreciation of the farmers? and Yeah. It was a big deal for many, many yeah, years. Yeah, it was uh, another unique thing. If anybody has any memorabilia, uh, involving uh, the male chorus in Cannon Falls, um, you know, bring it in and uh, let us see what it looks like. If they're photographs, um, we'll make digital copies of it and, and give you back your original along with the digital copy and then we get that. Um, I was just talking to Susie Bramer this mm -hmm. afternoon and she's starting to go through some of so the uh, memorabilia oh. from Todd and Sarah and um, wondering what to do, what to keep, what to throw. Yeah. And I said to her, don't throw it away, just run it past us first at, yeah, the, right. at the museum. And so right. um, uh, stuff that people don't think about, I hear about it all the time. Well, I didn't know you'd be interested in that. We just threw it yeah. away. Yeah. Ah, <laughs> you know, so um, um, give us a chance to look at it. And um, we would be uh, very, very happy to evaluate the value of it and, and um, who knows, it may be a piece to a puzzle that Zach is trying to figure out because we're running into that all the time where something comes in the door and Zach goes, oh, now I know what that means. Yeah. Yeah. You know, how we put it together down there. So, well, Chuck, Willie, I enjoyed this. I hope the audience oh, that watches definitely. this does and so. It was fun. Hey,